Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. South Africa's national oil company Petro SA aims to make an investment decision on a $375 million to $510 million liquefied natural gas import facility near Mossel Bay in the Western Cape during the fourth quarter of 2014. The group's LNG project manager Carlo Matason outlines the rationale for the proposed project, which is designed to sustain its gas to liquids facility as well as enable power our utility ESCOM to convert its Choriqua peaking power plant from diesel to gas. For Petro SA, you know, since, since uh, inception we've, we've never had certainty of supply. All our initiatives have always been at most five years of gas supply. We've never been able to plan fully and, and certainly as part of any growth strategy you need certainty of supply. We believe that LNG gives us that. Our key drivers was uh, CapEx as well as time to first gas. Um, you know, we're working towards receiving gas by 2018. We are looking at a, a near shore floating solution. Um, we're currently evaluating two alternatives, a single berth jetty configuration and a double berth jetty configuration. We are also in discussions with uh, ESCOM, who has a, um, a, a peaking power plant located right next door to our GTL refinery. ESCOM has got plans to convert that facility to a combined cycle uh, gas turbine. Converting to gas, you know, not only reduces the carbon emissions, it improves the efficiency of, of the product as well. So we're working towards quarter 4, 2014, and thereafter we estimate about a three-year time to construct and commission the facility. Um, and then, like I said, we're looking at receiving gas quarter 1, 2018. Other news making headlines this week, a new water distillation device ensures clean water for Eastern Cape clinics. The International Finance Corporation and the National Housing Finance Corporation commit $63 million to the Affordable Housing Fund. And export-led growth strategies are no longer viable, says UNCTAD. An energy-efficient water distillation device is providing clean drinking and medical water at six sites in the Eastern Cape as part of alpha phase tests conducted by drinks giant Coca-Cola Company and research and development firm Decker Research and Development. The core technology is vapor compression distillation um, and so it takes any source water um, through a uh, series of um, very efficient heat exchanges um, is able to um, bring that water to boil, um, and then uh, the system then adds a little bit of pressure and a little bit of temperature um, to that steam by putting it through a compressor. Um, that, uh, that steam then comes over to the other side to the condensation side, and it sees those relatively uh, cool surfaces, or warm surfaces as cool, uh, because you've added that bit of temperature. Uh, that pure water then condenses in that space um, and then is collected and, uh, and distributed out. The International Finance Corporation and the National Housing Finance Corporation have committed more than $63 million in investment to global private equity investor International Housing Solutions' second affordable housing development fund in South Africa. They normally say put your money where your mouth is. And now we've decided, now we're putting our money as an HFC to make sure that um, we do actually make a difference, especially for the segment of the market that currently is not adequately served by the private market. And that is really the agenda of the NHFC. If you were to ask me to sum it up, our job here is really to make um, the affordable housing market to be accessible and to be affordable for those people who have an income, maybe not great enough for them to be able to meet their needs in a private market, but do need some kind of facilitation to be where they're at. In fact, part of our agenda as NHFC is really to unlock this market so that in the main it may be served by the private market. 
A new United Nations Conference on Trade and Development study argues that five years since the onset of the financial crisis, the global economy remains in a structural crisis and it is therefore not possible for countries to pursue pre-crisis growth strategies, including export-led development policies. The global economy is in a state of structural crisis and we simply cannot revert back to the pre-growth strategies, the pre-crisis strategies. So what was working before 2007 is not going to be working from now on. And uh, I think it's very important that we, we really note that it's now been five years since the Lehman Brothers crash. So in that five years, we have not been able to turn the world economy around in the way that was anticipated. Now what this means is that the uh, traditional export-led development strategies are no longer viable. And what is required and what is the argument of this trade and development report is that a much more balanced strategy with a greater role for domestic and regional demand is needed. So we need to reconsider the role of wages and the role of the public sector. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.